talk about the Bronco Prime with a Incarnate Genesis. Let's get into the perks. Bronco Prime, first perk, Incarnate Mode. Second one, we have damage on energy spent, which sounds nice, or projectile speed with sprint speed. The weapon has fall off with this, it makes it uh, better. So I think this would probably be the the best choice actually. But we are gonna have to mess with our sprint speed. Other than that, magazine, accuracy, recoil. I feel like accuracy would be a good choice, but in this case, the accuracy is already so bad that this probably won't make it, uh, any difference. So magazine capacity. Then we have multi-shot, ammo efficiency, and critical chance. The critical chance in this weapon was already abysmal. So having 20% uh, plus on the base is just makes it a bit more viable. And for incarnate mode, just okay. Just makes it a, a lot better. I haven't really seen how it will work without the without this perk like the crit chance how much would it would be but I would say that we're gonna get some decent crits with this if not the multi shot would be the the next viable choice I think and we're back to the simulacrum first we chose the sprint speed stuff so the perk you can see 918 if we add rush or a sprint speed mod, we go to 1.3, and you can see it's 14 to 28. So it does work. I thought it could be bugged, but no, it's not. First build that I have for you is this. It's gonna be something quite hard to work around, and don't expect any miracle with this weapon. I gotta tell you, don't get your hopes too up. The accuracy is terrible. Uh, from far away is really, really bad. So, we have something like uh, something that wanted to be a Elato, like Elato Incarnate, but it's just not. The damage, I think the this fall off uh, perk really makes a huge difference, I have to say that. Because I did try the weapon uh, yesterday, it felt a lot worse. Still doesn't feel that great, but it works. It's working. Yeah, we could try to get some more crit, you know, uh, use something to increase our critical chance when we are aiming. Uh, that could potentially put us to, yeah, high cr higher crit tier. I chose to go with a heated charge here to further increase the damage. Uh, you could go with dizzing rounds. Dizzing rounds is a super interesting mod and it used to be the only purpose of this weapon uh, not a long ago. Before it had, to, had its incarnate version to simply open en enemies up for finisher. But actually, this is what I missed. The 200% status chance. Bruh. Yeah. That's uh, really around, what, 50% more? 51% more, maybe? Uh, yeah, kind of around that. That is a, a pretty chunky status chance. And we are actually gonna open enemies up for finishers in a AOE, pretty much. The only issue is gonna be that uh, they're gonna be... <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be a little bit harder to hit the heads with this. And I, I can feel the the heat not being here. Oh, I for I forgot that I had a arcane precision on. So the damage is already higher than what it should be. Yeah, forgot to mention that. So we're gonna take off precision, and you're gonna feel a a, a considerable difference in the weapon, uh, even with even more now that we don't have the heat. Maybe with a ribbon this weapon can, uh, can start to shine, but you can see the huge difference 
it has now. If we armor strip, it's gonna be fine. If without it, we need to stack. Or it won't kill much stuff. After everything is stacked, it gets decent. It's not better than the Lado. Not even close to the Lado or the Dual Fox Assist, but it is a interesting uh, addition. Talking about Disney Rounds, again, Disney Rounds is a mod that actually works with status effects. It gets re-triggered by status effects. So if I put a slash proc on the target uh, every sick or so, they're gonna get staggered again and be open for finishers again or any other kind of effect that leaves a dot. Electricity, gas, heat, that's gonna be a toxin, you know, all that good stuff. So, this is really the first build that I have. Let's take a look on the second one. Second one is, this is the primary build. Uh, I think this is what I used on the Wisp video with the level cap with no abilities. Probably this thing, yep. Would be much better now. <laughs> but uh, let's go into this. This is... I'm gonna take Saxon Spittle. I'm gonna put this in rounds in, this, in its place. Because of the status chance. Yeah, 95%. Not bad. Uh, let me see my... Dexterity. Okay. Just trigger our Dexterity before we go. Summon more enemies. There we go. With this, we're gonna have bleeds. Yeah, we got some bleeds. With bleeds, it it is interesting. But if you don't get the headshot, it's gonna be a bit weird. Act now. Let's open for finisher and use a finisher actually. Making good use of the my Huzzah, which is a uh, rapier that has guaranteed slash procs on the finisher. As you can see, it can be interesting. It could be better if we had something like viral going on with this. We could put like unranked mod so we don't increase the viral above our impact. We could try to work around that, but I don't know if it is worth the effort. These are steel path enemies. Uh, you can see that they're... The first target is always dying. If we had a Panzer Vopo pilot here, the results could be better, but I'm really not that excited for this. I mean, I've said before, every Incarnate Genesis is a buff to the weapon. But it doesn't mean that they're gonna become meta. If I had to choose between a Bronco with an Incarn Genesis and a Lado, I would go with the Lado on the top. But this is definitely an upgrade for this weapon. It just doesn't it doesn't make me as excited. If I were to keep this weapon as a primer, as I did in the past, I would probably go with instead of the critical chance, I would go with the multi-shot. And then the build would probably be the same only because of the dodge speed. This is just so, this mod is so good. If you never tried it, please do. It's so good. Yeah, more multi shots would be really good to proc in more status. Yeah, 146%. This would be really, really good, I think. I don't even know if I tried this before, to be honest. Yeah. Sounds decent. AoE primer? Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Never. But uh it is still interesting. If you wanna use some finishers. Ooh. You can CC enemies. Uh, it's a <laughs> almost a AoE CC. Not even, yeah, it's kind of hard to tell what goes on with this, but yeah. This is the Bronco Incarnate. I haven't a lot more to say about this. I was surprised 
uh, at the same time I was disappointed. But coming from a weapon that for the longest time existed for let's say the single objective which is open enemies up for finishers that didn't change a lot but you probably want to have a decent build for this if you happen to get it on the circuit i would keep this and put a corrupted bane instead of a grenier this would be what i would take for the the circuit if uh, actually, thinking I have, I've just put it Zara's Whisper in here, and Zara's Whisper could be something to deal with this the amount of inaccuracy I'm gonna call it of the weapon. But as it is with the Lado and the dual toxicists, it caps the weapon out. It just uh, removes the AOE potential of the weapon. Uh, because it, it, the projectiles ricochet, that is how it's called. This kind of uniqueness of the, the that these are uh, in common weapons have. So it really ends up capping them out. They, they you get a good damage on the main target, but for the other targets around, you're not gonna get a good damage. So yeah, that's gonna be it for me today. Leave a like, consider subscribing. Peace.